Okay, so I'm going to get going here. Um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Talent Insider. My name is Jeff Jeffries. I am with the Career and Professional Development Center at Carnegie Mellon University. And today we have a, a special guest with the Integrated Innovation Institute, uh, Peter Boatwright. And uh, before we get started, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have Peter go into the uh, the program there. And but before we get started, I wanted to go over some housekeeping. If you do have any questions uh, for Peter, uh, we'll probably address those in the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes of his presentation. But if you do have something um, that comes to mind during his presentation, feel free to put your, your questions, questions in the chat and I'll be sure to address those with Peter. So, um, so we can get started here. Peter Boatwright, I'm gonna turn it over to you now and uh, I'll let you take it from here. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you uh, for joining us today. What I'm going to tell you about is the Integrated Innovation Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, we're an educational institute. So the next thing I'm going to quickly tell you about after the institute is telling you about three different degree programs that we offer. Of course, they're all related. They all from the institute. So plan on hearing that, that you'll be uh, hearing about three different degree programs. So. Um, Jeff has already introduced me. Um, I happen to direct the Integrated Innovation Institute and uh, oversee these three uh, three degree programs. Um, have an awesome staff to work with, and it's uh, it's it's really exciting to be at Carnegie Mellon. As many of you would know, because you're here, you understand uh, what this university is about. So, what our institute focuses on, this high level, is we're cross training students to become elite innovators. So if you're thinking about a successful product or service, uh, the product or service has to function, has to accomplish things. That's what we're thinking of as engineering. And as you look at labels in engineering, it's across all kinds of engineering. It's, they make things happen. So successful product or service accomplishes things. It's for people, products and services, even if you're selling a pet product, it's, you know, it's the people who buy it. And uh, they're going to be gratified by seeing their pet enjoy it. So people, and that's the world of design. The design is any interface, the communication, the interaction, um, the delight. All right. So, but then when you're designing a product or service, you want, you're, you're creating value in the marketplace. You're creating value in communities in our world. And you want to keep doing that. There's got to be some way that, that makes it economically viable to keep doing what you're doing. And that's, that's the world of business. So we're training, that's cross-training. We're cross-training students with it, no matter what discipline they're coming from, they need to pick up uh, an understanding of these skills to speak this language, to leverage the capabilities of each of these areas, which now you see this shapes their thinking, but it's also about results. They're not just imagining what they would do, they need to be doers not just thinkers, but doers, action-oriented. So that's what our institute is about. Uh, we've chosen the word integrated because there's a higher level of, of um, uh, you know, coming together that takes place when you're thinking about integration versus let's say collaboration. Collaboration, you're still, it's us and them. You're telling them, you're making sure that you communicate and that they understand. Collab, you know, integration, you, you lose the us and them, it's all weak. We're working together. And when you're thinking about um, trade-offs and compromises, instead of thinking about, well, are they, is it going to be more of an engineering solution or is it more of a design or a business outcome? It, it, you know, we're looking for success. We're looking to really create value outside of your institution with customers, consumers. And so dropping those silos, dropping those barriers it just naturally happens as we focus, get our focus in the right place. So that was, that was the high level about integrated innovation. Uh, and now I want to move to our, our three different degree programs. You can see titles here and we're gonna, I'm gonna use acronyms, you know, very quickly. Uh, so Master of Integrated Innovation for Products and Services, you can see that's gonna be MIPS in my IPS. And then Software Management is at our Silicon Valley campus and that's gonna be MSSM and then this last one, MSTV, it starts in Pittsburgh 
and then students pick up their engineering courses and then they go to our Silicon Valley campus to think about creating the ventures. And so we're um, calling that by coastal. I know Pittsburgh's not on a coast, but East Coast, West, you know, it's, anyway, you get it. So first, MIPS. See, I told you I'd move to acronyms right away. So here, this is an innovation degree, products and services. You know, innovation takes place all over a university. There's art, there's music. There's technologies like crazy around uh, Carnegie Mellon. Our program is focused on products and services. It's not focused on technology. So we don't own innovation in general. What our focus is, is bringing together the right features and technologies and capabilities and business model and creating that so it's successful in the marketplace. We have two flavors of this degree. One of them is two semesters and one of them is three semesters. The majority of students nowadays uh, come in and they take for the, the three semester program. The benefit of the three semester program is that they can have an internship. They start in the fall, continue in the spring, have an internship in the summer. They can try out a company, a company can try out them. And then they come back and they get some more courses to uh, you know, finish off their education and they graduate in December. So that's, that's the uh, most common approach. The uh, two semester was the one that we've run the longest. That was our original design. Uh, and so fall, spring, graduate, go work. So I wanted to show everybody salaries because um, you know it's, it's not just about the education. It is just about the education, but somebody has to make sure that they're getting the right, right return on their investment. And I'm mentioning salaries up front because it's important for students coming in to understand. Um, and it's important for you to understand the capabilities of our, of our students. But I also want you to think about um, how closely, you know, how much salary variation there is on mainly uh, years of experience. So I also teach in an MBA program. And MBA salaries are, are higher than this. But I have taken the time to then look over if you have five more years of experience or four more years or three more years, et cetera, how would we rescale these salaries just due to inflation and due to um, you know, you, you know, salary increases? And um, this salary of 100,000 is lower than MBA salaries, largely just due to time. Our students um, have generally two years-ish of work experience instead of six years-ish of work experience of an MBA student. And so um, anyway, so I wanted to orient you in terms of salaries. 100,000 is, is the median salary for 2019. Uh, we skipped 2020 because uh, yeah, COVID happened. I mean, that's, a, that's a crazy year. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to give you more of a stable, normal year. You can see where these students head in terms of their titles. I'm not gonna read those. You've already read them long ago with me talking. And so, in, this is a, in the summary of this degree, these students come from a, either an engineering or a design or a business background. So they've got some depth in one of these areas. They're broadened, they're cross-trained to understand how to create products and services. And so then they're going and they're being product managers or an engineer who is really capable of creating products and services. And they're integrating uh, more understanding. They're integrating the business concepts, for example. That's one degree. Second degree. So this was the software management degree. So uh, here, I think, uh, if we're thinking about software engineering in contrast, software engineering is about the right product, you know, making sure that you're creating the product correctly, you're coding it correctly, that it's, that it's stable, that it communicates. So it's creating the product correctly. Software management is creating the correct product, all right? You got to understand what does the market need and what features and capabilities and how do you make it work as a business? So one way to think about this is it's the business of software. And so this is, again, you can see why this fits in the Integrated Innovation Institute because it's about creating the right product. In this case, it's a digital product. Um, and like all things digital, it migrates into physical because digital physical blends are everywhere. All right, this is an, in Silicon Valley, very appropriately. Um, and we have multiple flavors of this as well. So uh, 12 months, so students can start in the fall and fall, spring, summer. So they have uh, three semesters. Uh, that's a smaller number of students. Uh, a larger number of students take the 16 month, which means they start in the fall, fall, spring, summer, fall. 
in the summer often does have internships as part of that. And then part-time, uh, because it's in Silicon Valley and because it's on the business of software, many of those who are already working in the tech industry want to bolster their business skills. They want to understand, you know, I've been a software engineer for years, but I just really want to make sure that um, I understand the next level of why am I creating what I'm creating? How do I make decisions about where we should head strategically? So that's what, so we have a lot of part-time students coming in who have many years of experience. And given that they are in Silicon Valley and they have many years of experience, now you see the median salary is 140,000, um, which is reflecting two things, California wages, years of experience, both. Well, it's not just California wages, it's tech wages in California, okay? So there's, uh, that's the set. And then you can see the list of companies and the titles, um, product managers, again, product managers of digital products to a great extent, um, or they're in a, maybe a software engineering role. I see TikTok there, but, but it really transforms the mentality. It transforms the role. You're not just a software engineer. You're a software engineer who's forward-looking. Second, that's the second degree. Third degree, Master of Science of Technology Ventures. So this is uh, uh, designed for those just with engineering backgrounds to deepen that engineering and at the same time, really understand how to launch a tech venture, okay? Because tech is the rage and it's largely, you know, the businesses of tech are fueled from understanding technology. So these, that's what these students want to do. They, and great, to a great extent, they want to be the entrepreneur of, of a new tech um, enterprise. So the, there's two versions of this. Um, this uh, the MSTV three semester, they'll come in, they start in January. They come to Pittsburgh and they're in Pittsburgh for a semester. And then they go off for a summer internship, which we kind of help coordinate um, in Silicon Valley. And then they, so that's summer, and then fall and spring, they're in Silicon Valley, and then they graduate. So that's the three semester version. The dual degree is really um, another, like it's exciting because very few schools offer the range of dual degrees that Carnegie Mellon has been able to put together. Um, these are students who come in and they get two degrees, you know, dual degree, two degrees, that's what it is. And they're getting an engineering degree a full master's in engineering. It could be mechanical, it could be bio, it could be chemical, it could be uh, civil, I mean, a range of uh, degree options. And so they're spending um, a year in Pittsburgh, fall, spring, and then they go off for a summer to Silicon Valley, do an internship, and then they have another fall, spring in Silicon Valley. So two years in, in Carnegie Mellon, two degrees, uh, one in engineering, one in tech ventures. So that's a, a pretty powerful combination. Uh, here, you, you might be surprised that salaries are, are 92,000. Wow, what's wrong? What's wrong is that, it's not really wrong, is that these nascent industries, entrepreneurs often take a lower salary because they're, 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 they're getting equity. And so this is part of the Silicon Valley culture as well. Uh, and so, you know, here's where I, that's, you can now see why I wanted to explain salaries is in some cases, it's really high due to some factors. In other cases, this looks low relative to the amazing uh, skills these students have, but it's really the environment they're heading in that you've got to understand the context. So uh, there's the three degrees. Uh, quickly, innovation methodology, start with understanding the marketplace. Let's look outside the firm identifying trends and capabilities and opportunities, digging deep and understanding them. And only then are you creating concepts of what do we do about it? Now, many, many people do this backwards. It's often, I've got this idea of a product. Oh, let me see who, who might want it or you know, adapt it to them. It's really powerful to go forwards. Uh, and so we're, we're helping students gain those skills to do that. Educational outcomes is, is to a great extent, it is having this eye to understand the world around us, to see the opportunities and to then act upon them uh, using the skills we've given them to develop, to deliver, not just develop, but actually deliver robust uh, solutions that really cross these boundaries. Employers, certainly hiring students is gonna be one way that employers engage with us. Um, but another way is you know, there's internships and there's full time is that uh, 
we have, you could send your employees. Uh, so we have some part-time programs that your employees could attend, but then sponsoring projects. So we do like our students to learn hands-on because that's how you learn, especially in a world of something new, innovation. Uh, a lot of learning innovation, you can't read a Harvard business case study that happened two or three years ago or 15 years ago because we all know the answer. And even if we didn't know the answer for that particular company, we've lived during a time where the answers just sort of start to feel right because time has passed. With an innovation challenge, nobody knows the answer. There's this felt, we kind of find something where there's this felt near, it looks like there's some capability, but nobody, the company doesn't really know where to head. The users who might end up using that or buying it, they don't know what they, you're figuring out exactly shaping the problem and what piece of the problem really is the relevant piece. And that's a skill you can only do by, by living it out for real. And so if you have some um, project ideas or you even wanna start thinking about ideas, uh, we, we uh, work with companies for projects and uh, we've done a variety. So here's some past internships over the summer, uh, give you a sense of where our students have landed. And here's a sampling of past uh, sponsors um, of, uh, of our projects. And you know everybody need, needs innovation, every company. So you see pharma, you see airlines, you see uh, technology companies, um, physical product. It's, it's all over the board, naturally. All right, and that is, uh, that's it. And so I will turn it, I'll let Jeff uh, kind of help coordinate questions. Yeah, absolutely. No, that was great, Peter, thank you so much. Uh, one of the questions um, I had was, you know, for the employees, if I have uh, an employee that would like to do some continuing, continuing education, um, is that an online offering? Is that in person? And how would one register for something like that? Right. So uh, right now we have an online, so our Silicon Valley software management program, um, many of the employees do attend online, you know, at least pre-COVID traffic was a nightmare. And so driving for a while, so we for years, probably 14 years have had an online or in the class, you can mix and match, we can call it hybrid if you will. We've had a hybrid situation for the software management degree. For MIPS in the, like this year, uh, part-time is really Pittsburgh located companies, but that's changing. So next year we're launching a new online MIPS, but more about that later, because I don't want to scoop our story for later. Oh, that's that's to come. <laughs> what about the, uh, somebody had a question about the makeup of the students. How many students are in a graduating class and how diverse is the class? That you yeah, have? yeah, um, diverse. All right, so I will, I will say that, um, and it really depends on the degree, uh, uh, greatly depends on the degree. So our Pittsburgh degree, we're gonna, we typically, I think this year we'll have like over 50 students coming in. Um, and so the graduating class, 50 students. Uh, the diversity, it's 4951 in terms of gender balance. Uh, I mean, it's pretty dead on uh, in terms yeah. of balance. Uh, I've forgotten domestic and, and international statistics. I'm gonna guess, um, I mean, Carnegie Mellon in general has a massively international population. And so we echo Carnegie Mellon's general statistics in that way. But our international student body is diversifying to a more and more, to a greater and greater extent. It's fun to see, I mean, we have a lot of Middle East candidates where even 10 years ago, we didn't. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's more and more, it's a wider and wider range of companies where students are coming from. So that's Pittsburgh. Our Silicon Valley program, um, the software management has, has very few domestic students who are coming. It's, it's really a fantastic way for international students to um, you know, get some skills that are really valuable. Um, and so many are, you know, I'd say the vast majority are coming from international locations. And then uh, our MSTV program is much smaller, 20-ish. Uh, is uh, probably a stretch, maybe it's 15. 
um, and they're getting those two degrees. It's a uh, labor of love. And that is, I'm gonna just say 60% international, 40 domestic is my guess. Uh, again, nice mix of, of men and women. Great. Now we mentioned uh, earlier um, capstone projects. Uh, how would one get engaged uh, with you to do a, a sponsor some sort of a capstone? And what is the price point on that? Or does is, are, is there a cost for a capstone project? So the capstones, um, we have the capstones are that are out of Pittsburgh. Um, are a mix. It could be software. It could be physical. It could be any range of products, um, applications. Those are um, the way you would get engaged with. The easiest way is to go to our website and look up the company tab, and then um, inquire. We don't really make you do a lot of work in terms of an inquiry form, but that would be the easiest way for me to just tell you over the web. Go to the website and click on the inquiry and give us your and and then we'll start the conversation. The price point, those are around 50,000 for the first project. And then um, the next project is like, if you did two, I think it's, uh, I've forgotten the price. It's like 80 for two or 75 for two or something like that. Um, and so, I mean, there is a fixed cost to establishing relationships. So anyway, that's, that's roughly the price point for these. Benefits to the company at the capstone, in addition to getting to understand our students, in addition to the research they're producing, uh, about a third of them, the companies have patented. I mean, these are, I mean, this, it's really a fantastic where you take a bunch of smart students and really walk them through a proven process and to reach a, a viable you know, direction. So a third patented, I don't even know how many have been launched because a lot of these go secret. Of those I know about, 100% were successful. Now, small numbers. I know of four products that were launched, and uh, all, all four are still out there now. Uh, so I, I'm proud of our students. But it's, so, great. it's something that's really relevant to companies. So that's how to get involved. No, that's fantastic. And, and I'll add this. If anybody, um, I know a lot of the folks on the call are engaged with our office. So if anybody does have any questions about that, we're happy to make the personal introductions to the folks on your team, Peter, to make sure uh, we funnel those people to the, the proper channels. So Thank happy you. to help out in that way as well, instead of just going to the website. Um, one of the things I had a question about, now we have a uh, the Masters of Product Management, which is in a different program that's within Tepper, kind of a mm -hmm. combination of mm -hmm. computer science and, and our Tepper uh, Business School. And that's a new, new uh, program. And I noticed there's a lot of product managers coming out of um, III. How do those product managers like they're so if I'm if I'm somebody hiring for product managers, how yeah. would those um, programs be different? So yeah. how would the students coming out of your program differ from the ones coming out of the the other program I I mentioned? If you're interested in a product manager, especially in a tech arena, um, Carnegie Mellon is an amazing school to come to because we've got lots of degrees that that people, you know, students graduate and become product managers. So there's the program that um, I, I've mentioned, there's programs. Um, and then Jeff just mentioned the Master of Product Management. In addition, um, there's a, um, trying to think of the acronym, there's HCI, there's the Human Computer Interaction Institute. A lot of their students graduate as, as product managers. There is a program that is College of Engineering. I can't think of the acronym at the moment, sorry, or even the title, just blanking. Sometimes I blank on names, it's all right. Um, <laughs> in any case, what I guess I'm saying is there's a, if you're interested in product managers, have an open mind in coming into Carnegie Mellon and then there's MBA students, all right? You know, there's lots. So you, you've got a lot to choose from now. The real question is how, you know, why, how do they differ? Um, I think the best thing to do is to evaluate each student because they have a background before they came to Carnegie Mellon and you look at their package of skills, but you already knew that. As far as the education, look at the classes because when I advise students of which degree to come get, I tell them, think about your capabilities. What do you want to add to those capabilities? 
And every one of these programs, every one of these degrees has a certain set of classes. There's only so much that they can cover in the time frame, and they emphasize different aspects. So our programs, I'll tell you up front, we emphasize understanding people, what product to create, and that's where we put a lot of our effort um, is the upfront research of people to understand, and then you marry that to the features and capabilities. That would be uh, an emphasis of us. That's terrific. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, now, I know we have a lot of people who are on the call that are in, in charge of hiring or in, in, involved with the hiring process. And uh, May is, is uh, we are in May, actually. Um, do you have current students that are that are going to be graduating that are still looking for jobs? And if so, um, is there a way that my office can connect uh, your students with with some of our uh, folks on the on the call here to uh, make some introductions? Uh, yes, we do have students who are who are looking for roles. Um, both full-time and, uh, and internships. And so both of those are on the table. As, as far as Jeff, we can, you know, I'm not sure the best way to, I mean, already our students are, are working with the Career Center, but yep. uh, for, these for anyone on the call, if, they reach, if you reach out to Jeff, uh, I'll just offer that. You can reach out to him and we'll make sure that we close the loop in terms of communication. Terrific, terrific. Um, and I think that's all the questions we have. And actually, we're almost up on time. So I will I will put it out there one more time. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Well, oh, wait. All right. I guess not. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, that was a great presentation. I know the students coming out of that program are absolutely amazing. And uh, thank you to everybody who joined us today. Hopefully um, you will uh, find this helpful. Uh, Tara Fong asked if these slides will be shared. Uh, Peter, are you okay with us Fine. sharing the I'm slides? I'm okay with that, sure. Absolutely. So we will, uh, we will get the slides out to all the participants so you can use those. Um, other than that, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody.